This presentation is part of a workshop, Voicing Indigenous Food Sovereignty Struggles, which has been organized by the project Indigenous Food Systems in Transition, financed by Future Food at the Swedish University for Agricultural Sciences. Furthermore, the workshop was organized in collaboration with Case Study 18 of the Horizon 2020 Finance Project Just North. You are welcome to listen to the lecture. Welcome, uh, please, um, Mamidela Raim uh, and um, Maxim Sishayev. Uh, um, Bamidele uh, uh, is um, a fellow at um, uh, the University of Lapland in um, Rovaniemi, and Maxim uh, is um, a professor at Murman's Arctic State uh, University. So uh, please, um, the floor is uh, yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, our title of our presentation, joint presentation is shown on this uh, slide, so I'll start to save our time. Uh, so the next slide. Rendi has been in Murmansk region rather small in absolute uh, values. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it is considered as uh, one of the most important economic uh, sectors in the region. And uh, actually, it is, uh, it is the main branch of agriculture in the region, uh, excluding fishery. Murmansk region uh, has a good level of digital preparedness in comparison with other parts of Russian Arctic zone. We have a rather high level of internet uh, penetration and dense covering of mobile networks in populated areas. On the other hand, uh, we have a number of measures of government support for dig digitalization of agriculture. Russia has programs to support agriculture both at federal and regional levels. Programs have rather good funding. For example, in 2020, uh, Murmansk region farmers receive uh, more than 24 million rubles of support from different budgets. But it should be noted that reindeer uh, husbandry, like other branches of agriculture, is viewed as a uh, plain businesses in uh, governmental uh, programs. And the main goals of these programs are to increase the productivity of the industry. But cultural values of the reindeer husbandry are not touched upon in most of the programs. What possibilities opens digital technologies in ready husbandry? Main, main directions of digitalization in ready husbandry includes five main items shown on this picture. I will briefly characterize them further. Internet of thin technologies are the most advanced uh, field of livestock industry di digitalization in recent years. Uh, they are used for early detection of uh, health and productivity problems for precision livestock farming and other sensor solution, uh, sensor based solutions. Uh, the main uh, limitation of, uh, of the spread of such systems are caused by complexity, high total cost and uh, need for new competences. Electronic identification of animals uh, with use of radio frequency transponders uh, perhaps is the uh, most wi widely used uh, digital technology in the in Randy husbandry, including the Murmansk region. Uh, the technology used uh, have been successfully tested for operation in low temperatures, uh, so they are applicable to use in Arctic. Uh, the main uh, application of uh, automation and robotization uh, in ready husbandry is the processing of meat and byproducts. Uh, we have a number of cases of using such technologies in Russian ready husbandry too. Uh, 
basically almost all modern digital technologies for organization and management are applicable uh, in reindeer husbandry, including digital twins, uh, ERP systems, uh, SCADA system, etc. Geo-information technologies and remote sensing are widely used for pasture monitoring, livestock accounting, monitoring of environmental impacts, and other important tasks. This slide summarizes availability and actual use cases of mentioned uh, technologies on different uh, stages of reindeer value chain in Russia. We can see uh, that the modern digital technologies, to a greater or lesser extent, cover all units of the reindeer product chain. However, they, their actual use in reindeer herding practice is not so great. Now I pass the floor to my co-presenter, Dele. Yeah, thank you. So if I move on to the next slide, this is about, uh, uh, first of all, greetings from uh, Rovaniemi from the Arctic Circle. I uh, hope you can hear me clearly. So now in the Finnish Lapland, uh, some basic facts about reindeer heading. The map is showing some basic facts, you know, in the Lapland region, which is about one third the size of uh, Finland. So in here, uh, if we, we have the home area for Sami people and a particular area for heading in this uh, region. This is from the uh, Finnish reindeer Headers Association. Next slide, please. So again, more on the map. Uh, this is the source of income for reindeer headers. It's also provided by the Reindeer Headers Association, uh, which is uh, being uh, published within the Finnish Food Authority. So we have uh, 40 companies that process uh, reindeer meat, 17 slaughterhouses, two are owned by outsiders, and uh, so the main income is from the meat. And of course, the rule of uh, subsidies is quite uh, marginal. Next slide. Okay. So now this, this particular uh, slide is showing uh, on the uh, number of reindeers that are killed from 1991 to 2017. So in this particular map, it's showing uh, the that is causing uh, up to 15 million euros annually uh, because uh, if cars are damaged, then you have to claim insurance and the rest of it. And also 100,000 kilograms of meat from these uh, dead reindeers are killed. So as a result of that, uh, there's an app that has been uh, uh, produced since uh, 2017. This is called a Poro Kelo. The Poro Kelo is kind of a warning sign for drivers on the road. Uh, when the reindeer is, approach, is approaching, that you can get a, a signal from the app. So this is something that has been introduced to alert the drivers while on the road to avoid killing reindeers. Next slide, please. So again, um, in order to ensure more of a feasibility, so during uh, this uh, value, uh, addition to the uh, reindeer to produce more meat. Uh, there are also important innovations. For example, this um, Innova food processing software. So the first, uh, can you click on the, uh, click on the, sli on the slide? Yeah, sorry about this. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say, say if I could share myself. So the innovation software is uh, installed in production lines so as to able to ensure traceability and visibility within the global food chain. So this particular uh, software is being utilized by a reindeer company here. Uh, this is uh, not far from where I live here. So if you click on the next slide, yeah, this is a, a poker reindeer meat. So they've been in business since uh, 1969 so they ensure that, you know, in terms of uh, traceability and also to ensure the authenticity of the product uh, seen in this uh, particular label, which is showing that this is uh, originally uh, from this, uh, from Lapland. So uh, they also ensure uh, proper distribution and storage using uh, digital solutions. So if you could 
On, next slide, please. Uh, for example, the near field communication, whereby gadgets can talk to each other. So actually, most of the uh, technology that uh, Maxim described eloquently, we also have some of it in a similar things in Finland. So I don't want to repeat the same thing that is happening in the, in the, uh, in the Russian Arctic. So the NFC is also well utilized uh, to ensure that this, uh, the authenticity of the products. Next slide, please. So again, here are some of the uh, products that is uh, being sold mainly to tourists, you know, in, in, in the market in, uh, in Rovaniemi and other Lapland areas. It's uh, about indigenous uh, Finnish uh, reindeer meat, 100% meat. And uh, of course, the labeling is something that is going to also uh, radicalize the future in terms of uh, communicating to the consumers because the label after the, the the packaging label apart from the packaging protecting the food itself it also have the role to ensure that communication with consumers and of course with the uh, latest technology this kind of labels they can actively interact with consumers so the consumers can maybe by scanning the label, they can get more information about how the product has been produced. And I think the EU is also looking at that kind of uh, direction whereby the label can also inform how climate friendly the product is. So in terms of different classification, this is still under discussion that you can uh, kind of rate the climate uh, impact of that product. And this is something that I think we work in favor of reindeer in the future. Next slide, please. So again, this is uh, about this uh, poker reindeer meat in terms of uh, uh, the kind of uh, technology to ensure the uh, products are well preserved under a good condition in the uh, low temperature storage. If you click, please, on the next. So again, about the distribution, you know, not only the meat, they also deal with uh, the other parts of the reindeer, uh, the reindeer heights, which is also something that they've been in business uh, on since uh, 1969. So again, next slide, please. Yes, again, so this is uh, also something from the uh, bioactive bone substitutes in terms of adding value to not only the meat, but also the, the bone can be used to treat uh, bone defects. So by uh, preparing a kind of a broth powder, this was a product that was chosen as a, uh, a health product of the year in Finland uh, last year. Uh, if you uh, click on the button, next slide. Thank you. So again, this is uh, the bone broth uh, from Biomed. So uh, ne next slide, please. Okay, thank you. So this is for you to conclude. And I will conclude with a short uh, YouTube video, which is based on uh, uh, slaughtering that was developed in a uh, lab plant. Please, okay. yes. yes. So, uh, several words for, for conclusion about prospects, constraints, and the risk of the digitalization of reindeer in a Russian point of view. Uh, digitalization opens up a number of poss possibilities, including uh, increasing productivity at all stages of the value chain, uh, improving product quality, expansion of uh, product uh, markets, uh, improving the efficiency of uh, process management, uh, and raising awareness in a wide sense. Uh, the main constraints are as follows, uh, lack of uh, financial resources for the introduction of ICT in the majority of, agri of agricultural uh, producers. Uh, in Russia, the structure of consumption is dominated by cheap, by cheap and uh, low quality uh, food products, which uh, do not include uh, reindeer products, which are rather expensive. Uh, lack of uh, qualified personnel also is very important uh, limitation and insufficient development of digital infrastructure in uh, rural areas. Uh, also, digitalization is connected with some uh, risks, mostly caused by the fact that uh, it transforms reindeer uh, husbandry from a traditional to a high-tech industry. These risks are uh, digitalization programs for agriculture in general are aimed at, uh, at increasing production, but uh, considering reindeer husbandry as a plain business uh, in, in some aspects uh, contradicts its uh, uh, cultural value. 
Uh, modern, expensive digital agricultural technologies are fully available only to large enterprises. However, uh, reindeer husbandry in the Murmansk region is represented only by the small enterprises. And uh, the acute uh, shortage of qualified uh, personnel with the digitalization will only worsen. Thank you. And again, get there. Yes, thank you. Uh, finally, finally, to conclude, looking ahead with my concluding remarks, so the issue of training the future generation is very critical, as shown by the Poro Peda project, which is run by the Lapland University of Applied Sciences in Rovaniemi here. It's a froze bit, so the uh, short YouTube is just a little bit over one minute. So I'm hoping that this can be played. If you click on that, uh, please, on the YouTube. So, yeah, thank you. I think that's what we do. You got the idea anyway. <laughs> <laughs>